Yeah. Yep. All right, guys, and maybe the one girl that watches my channel. Appreciate you if you're out there. Uh, this is 299 Tactical. We're back out on the range today, and we're gonna run a uh, budget-oriented uh, kind of entry-level carry pistol. Uh, this is the Taurus G2C. This is a striker fire polymer frame double stack. Uh, it's very comparable to, let's say, the size of uh, a shield. This is a shield 2.0 with a crimson trace grip. You can see they're pretty similar in size here. And width, even in the grip panels, with the Taurus being a double stack, the shield's a single stack. And the overall footprint of the trigger guard is also pretty similar. Taurus G2C is just a little bit more squared off. And it also does have a pick rail on the bottom with one slot for accessory rail. So um, just to give you familiar reference, everybody's pretty familiar with the shield for the most part. Uh, they're really, really good uh, concealed carry guns. However, they are significantly more expensive than something like this. This guy here, uh, MSRP, uh, I believe is well under $300. Uh, I know when I got mine on sale, it was $230 plus a $30 mail-on rebate from Taurus. So, I mean, there you go. It's uh, not not very expensive at all. So, will it stand up? Will it, you know, last? I, I guess that's what we're here to find out, right? So, uh, I've already put 200 rounds through this guy. Uh, initial thoughts and impressions are, it's uh, it's a pretty solid little pistol. Honestly, it feels very comparable to a shield. The trigger is uh, is not very good at all, though. The trigger is very, very uh, stagey and creepy. So I'll just show you guys empty chamber here. Obviously, no mag in the gun. So uh, downrange, you can see it's got a lot of stacking before the break. Reset is not very tactile and it's not very audible, but it is there. And then again. Just to show you guys the full range of travel here. It's a, a, a ton of stacking here. I'll go from this side. You can see all this uptake. And then it kind of stacks at the wall. And it's got a really creepy break. And then it goes. So, and then for the reset. Kind of stagey. There it is. You can hear it click. It's kind of mushy feeling. Not very tactile. And like I said, not very audible as well. But it is there. Um, so... That's another one I would definitely one up the shield for. Uh, as much as people complain about the MMP series triggers, it's much, much better than this. Um, aside from that, though, the uh, stippling here on the frame is very, very good. It's it's kind of spotty, but it's got very nice thumb cutouts on both sides of the slide here. So I'll show you this guy, this side here as well. It's got up by where the lightning cut would be uh, for everybody who shoots. You know, thumbs forward. Go this way with it. Thumbs forward. You know, you can really get up here on this index and uh, notch your thumb in, and it feels really, really nice. So, aside from that, I have had no issues with it whatsoever. Not even one hiccup to this point. And I've shot a lot of cheaper stuff through it, and like mil serp, nine mil, you, you name it. Uh, we're we're going to do a little test here now. Uh, I want to see how well does this run carry ammo, because a lot of people are going to carry this gun uh, as an entry-level carry gun. So, the first round I have is the Hornady Critical Duty. Uh, I believe it's 124 grain, and this is a polymer tipped hollow point. So rapid expansion, very, very good carry around. And the second one is a Federal HST. So again, very large cuts for the pedals for large expansion in a rapid fashion. So we'll see how she does with the hollow points here. I got five of the HSTs left, all the rest are in my Glock at home. Uh, and in their spare mag, so I don't I didn't bring a lot with me. And I have 10 loaded up off the critical duty. So let's see how she does here. Just put a couple shots down range. Okay. Box open the last shot, no problem there. Again, like I said, these are 12 plus one, uh, and it does come with two mags from the factory. Unless, obviously, you have to get like a Maryland, California compliant model, then you're going to get two 10 rounders, which sucks for you guys. Sorry. And this is what the critical duty. Again, no problem whatsoever. Uh, it runs 
really, really smooth. I noticed immediately with the critical duties, they have a lot less recoil than the HSTs, so they might not be loaded quite as hot, uh, but they are a fantastic carry around. Overall, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. I want to definitely keep running it and running it and running it. Um, and it, the one thing worth mentioning, uh, it does have a loaded chamber indicator here. So when you have a round in the chamber, that little, that little guy's gonna pop up and let you know that there is a round in the chamber. Also, it does have adjustable rear sights for windage and elevation, uh, it, which this one does need work. Uh, I'm significantly left out of the box uh, directly from the factory. I tried playing with it a little bit today, but I need to read the owner's manual a little bit more and then go back through and actually set it up properly. Um, it also does have a manual safety. So a lot of guys might not like that on a striker fire gun, but I mean, it is there um, and it's very easy to use. So if you need to get your thumb in there, I mean, for the left-handed guys, it would be a little bit more difficult because obviously it's only on one side of the gun, but it's really, really easy to use. The uh, slide lock, slide release, also very very easy you can do it with your hand on the side of the gun no problem so it's very easy to manipulate it takes down somewhat like a glock here you just pinch these guys with the slide back pull the trigger it comes off um, but aside from that she's running really really well we're gonna uh, load up some more mags here and we'll go through and see how she does so guys I got Tyler back out on the range with me again today uh, he's gonna run the Taurus G2C here for you a little bit so that way you uh, get multiple perspectives on this guy. Uh, he's a Shield 2.0 owner, carries one every day. So he's very familiar with the uh, footprint size of this gun. Uh, just a little bit different because it's double stacked, but the overall size and footprint the actual gun makes is very similar. So uh, I'll have I'll turn it over to him here and I'll have him run some mags for you on camera and see what he thinks about it. Alrighty, I'm gonna shoot this bad boy. All right, so first impressions, shoots a lot like the shield as far as recoil goes. Feels about the same in the hand other than it being a uh, double stack. So it's actually a little bit more comfortable, but for me, I like the single stack, obviously to conceal a little bit easier because I'm small. Um, the only the thing I will say is the, um, the trigger in this, like Paul said, see what he means. It is not very good. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. It just has a lot of take up. So going from the shield to this feels like the shield trigger take up is like microscopic compared to this. But other than that, shoots really nice, shoots really flat. I love the stipling on the grip. It's really comfortable. It's not too, it's not too much, not too little. Um, sights are, I mean, they're regular sights. Can't really say much about them, but it is nice that they're adjustable for windage and elevation, whereas the shield is only adjustable side to side for windage. But um, but yeah, it's a good little carry piece, especially for the price. Can't really beat the price. And I think Paul said, how many rounds did you say put through this? Uh, that's north of 300 now. Without a hiccup, right? Yeah, nothing Yeah, bad. so. I mean, we did have that one that didn't lock the slide open. Yeah, failure to lock the slide open on the last round, but I mean, that was one out of how many. So I would say it's a pretty good gun. I would consider it, honestly. But uh, yeah. So uh, so there you have it, guys. Like I said, uh, all kind of off camera there. We did have only one hiccup, and that was actually on the last mag he just ran. I don't know if you guys noticed it there at the end, but it, it didn't lock the slide open on the last shot fired, which obviously it's supposed to do that because the mag catch is supposed to come up and stop the slide. And the slide release will slide, slap, slide release engages, holds it open. Didn't have that on the last one. So that's the only failure we've had kind of going through this break-in period here. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, also, I will make sure it's not just a mag. Uh, we'll continue to do more testing with different ammo and stuff. 
Could have just been a dud round, didn't have enough power to get the slide to go back. But who knows? We'll see. Only hiccup I had, I'm not really going to complain too much about it. But like I said, if we eclipse the thousand round marks and that's the only thing that I have go wrong with it, I'm probably going to carry it every now and again, I'll be honest with you. I feel like that's pretty reliable if you go a thousand rounds and only have one failure. Well, uh, so. We got two mags, both factory mags here, loaded back up. 115 grain Winchester full metal jacket, just some target load stuff, nothing fancy as ball ammo. So uh, just again to show you guys how it's really easy to manipulate. It takes no force to get the slide stop, slide release to let go. We've got 12 rounds loaded up, so let's run it and see how she does. Okay. Pulled a couple of those a little left, but for the most part, they're stacking into the size of a, basically a, I don't know, a small cantaloupe or so here at 10 yards, which I'm not too mad about. So go a little bit slower here. So the factory stippling or texturing on this is very very nice for the right-handed it, uh, it bites in just enough but not too much I know a lot of people compare uh, the the feel of this somewhat similar to the MMP 2.0 compacts uh, I agree with that um, it doesn't go up as high and it's not quite as aggressive though so I feel like it'd be a little bit better for a concealed carry so it doesn't rub you if you don't have an undershirt on uh, but aside from that runs completely flawlessly we're, we're getting close to 300 rounds at this point and I have had no hiccups so I'm going to continue to update you guys as we go along with this one because uh, I want to see, is it $200 worth of trash, $200 worth of greatness, is it $200 this, man, was it worth spending the money? I'm not sure yet, we'll have to find out, but uh, I do know that once it gets around the 1,000 round mark, if it continues to have no hiccups, I'll probably use it as like a, a concealed carry gun every now and again, or maybe I'll leave it in the center console of, of one of my dailies, so that way I always have something with me if I need it. Um, but aside from that... I'll let you guys be the judge and see what you think as we continue to update it. Feel free to comment down below and tell me what you think. If you have one, how's yours running? Just uh, all up for a good conversation about it. So thanks you guys for uh, tuning in to 299 Tactical. Uh, please like and subscribe as I get a bug on my face. Uh, <laughs> please like and subscribe. Let me know what I can do better. And uh, let me know what you'd like to see in an upcoming video. So thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. See you in the next one. I don't even think I can pull the trigger far enough with my pinky. Really? It's that bad. Fuck that trigger. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. <laughs>